can't keep doing this. I can't just keep going on not actually exploring these ideas and these dreams that I have, being too afraid to put them out there. I just had this overwhelming feeling inside that there was more for me, that I was ready to break through to the next level and actually get on with life and create it the way I wanted to create it. Hello! Um, I'm so happy that you're here. We, As I'm sharing this with you right now, we are on the cusp of a new year. How exciting! Happy New Year! Um, so I feel like for me personally, at this time of year, I really, I feel itchy. <laughs> I feel itchy for change. I feel itchy for new beginnings. I feel ready for new exciting things. I am ready to like just really get going with everything. I don't know about you, but that is often how I feel. Um, the thing is, so often we have, you know, big goals and big dreams that we you know things we want to achieve and then what happens is we get to the end of the year and we haven't reached those goals we haven't made the progress we wanted and we feel stuck so often we feel stuck in a holding pattern it's like we're living the same year on repeat over and over and over again and it starts to feel really frustrating and really you start to feel like a failure when you're not actually you don't feel like you're progressing in the direction you want to go in and I know I have felt like this so many times and so the question I was thinking about recently is like what creates change? What is the actual, how do we actually break through and create what we want to create? How do we get to the place we want to get to? How do we actually make the next year a better year? And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking back over amazing things that I've ever learned. And um, I remember Jim Rohn saying, if you want change, you have to change. When you change, things will change. When you get better, things will get better. And I started thinking it's, it is so true. I remember back to the year where my life changed, uh, which was 2011. And um, my life dramatically changed that year. The previous few years, I had been stuck in this holding pattern, this loop of, of having these dreams and this vision of wanting to do something but feeling so consumed by imposter syndrome and not taking myself seriously and just really being stuck in my own way one of the biggest like biggest mantras I was stuck with was was I don't know what to do 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 like it just became it, it was just a big part of my thinking and I felt so tangled up in it all and for me personally I reached this point where I just spiraled into oh I I just felt like I reached the bottom and I was so fed up with myself I was so fed up it was a February and I started the new year with hope and excitement this is going to be a different year this year I'm going to make it different and I started the year in exactly the same way I'd started every other year, just the same old, doing the same old things, thinking the same old thoughts, feeling just as stuck as I was, you know, the previous year. And I just was at a loss with myself, feeling so frustrated. And I remember rereading the e-myth by Michael Gerber and his funeral exercise in that book where you imagine it's your funeral and you imagine like what would people be saying about the kind of life you lived and the kind of things you achieved and the kind of person you were. And it's almost like a breaking point of like, I can't keep doing this. I can't just keep going on, not actually exploring these ideas and these dreams that I have, being too afraid to put them out there. I just had this overwhelming feeling inside that there was more for me, that I was ready to break through to the next level and actually get on with life and create it the way I wanted to create it. But the previous few years, I had been wanting to do that and I'd been setting my goals to do that, but then it never happened. It just didn't happen. And so in 2011, when I had this breakthrough moment in the February... I realized that it was never going to happen until I did something about it. It was never going to happen until I changed. I couldn't set these goals and then I couldn't not change who I was being and expect a different result. Like um, Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I was setting myself these goals, but then doing the same thing over and over and over again, running the same beliefs in my mind over and over and over again and actually expecting that something different would happen. Nothing different happened. So in 2011, I was like, I'm going to change this. And so I created my mission success challenge, which was really about how, how will my life change if I condition myself for success? If I open myself up to the possibilities of, 
um, just see like what would be possible. And I looked at things like the way I was thinking. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do was like a mantra. So what was the opposite of that? I can and I will watch me. I can and I will watch me. So, so much more powerful than I don't know what to do. 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 No, I can and I will watch me. And so I started to try and like take back my power in simple ways through little things like quotes and mantras and reading inspirational books and and, and feeding my mind with things that were actually going to inspire and empower me. So that was one step. But the other step was in thinking, okay, so if the past few years I've been procrastinating and I've been setting goals and I've not been reaching them and I've been stuck in the same old loop of like wanting something but not being able to reach it because quite frankly, I'm not really, I'm not doing the doing to reach it. I'm like stuck. I'm stuck in my own way. I was like, well, something has to change. Like I have to change. But what I realized is that actually what I was doing was I had this big goal And I was trying to figure out how to go from zero to 100. And because I was so fixed on like, how do I get to 100? That I couldn't ever take step one. And so what I did was actually, instead of trying to figure out step 100, what is the actual one step I could start to take right now? So for me back then, I wanted to have this platform for women in business. I knew that and I was really inspired and excited about it. But the idea of actually figuring out what the bloody hell to sell, what would my offer be? What would I create? Creating a course or an ebook at the time or whatever just felt unbelievably overwhelming. I wasn't there and I got so hung up on it and so tripped up by it that I just couldn't take that next step. I procrastinated because it was like I was asking myself to take step 100 when I hadn't even taken step one. So I was like, what would be step one? And recognizing, well, what could I do to just show up and maybe start talking about my idea? So I thought maybe I could go on LinkedIn and maybe on LinkedIn, I can start building out my profile and I can maybe start joining some groups and reaching out to some people, um, sharing, you know, what I'm doing, connecting with people. Maybe I could start finding women whose stories I might be able to share. I could interview them and I could share their stories of how they've built their businesses. And I could put that on the website. That was, that is something that I could maybe do. That feels doable. I feel like I could reach out to some people and ask if I could interview them. I could actually do that. And so I started to do it. And then I thought, well, I could start going to some networking events. And even though it was a bit scary, I was like, I could, I could, this is something that I could actually go and do. I could go and find events around me and I could start going. So I did. And some of them were bloody awful, but some of them were really amazing. And then I met people and then I met more people and I started talking more about what I was doing. And the more I started talking about what I was doing, the more I started to feel like I was actually doing it, the more momentum I began to build. And then opportunities started showing up and I'd get invited along to events and I would go to these events and some of them were awful and some of them were great. And sometimes I met amazing people that connected me with all these different people. And all of a sudden I was in it. I was in it. I wasn't just sat on the sidelines watching my dream and wanting this thing, but not ever stepping in to do it. I was actually doing it. And I was taking the tiniest of tiny little steps to get me going. I had my little blog I was reaching out when I was chatting to people. I was telling people what my what I was planning on doing and what my vision was and my ideas were. I was working on myself and on my own mindset. I was thinking, I fully don't I don't fully know what I want to say, what I what I'm here to fully say, but I do know amazing people who I have learned from and I could start sharing some of the best things that I've learned from them. So I started to share amazing quotes and like different things and um, put a little post together on like things that had really helped me and had really inspired me. And so I started taking those little steps to actually start to get my ideas out there. And and it's the same thing it goes, okay, that was me right at the beginning of starting a business. But even at every step, of my journey and every new level that I'm trying to get to, it's looking at like, okay, well, here is where I'm trying to get to. And that's step 100. And I'm not at step 100 yet. So I can't ask myself to try and take step 100. I have to try and ask myself to take the next little teeny tiny step. Because if I can figure out what that teeny tiny step is, I can start to actually do the things I need to do in order to create the change I want to create, in order to create the success that I want to create. 
And so figuring out what is that next tiny step for you and focusing on that next tiny step rather than thinking about next year and thinking about all the big goals that you have and asking yourself to take the big steps. Because success isn't in the big steps. In my experience, success is in the tiny little steps we take. Success is a combination of the teeniest, tiniest steps all combined together to create something that's truly incredible. So as you go into the new year, ask yourself, what are the teeny tiny steps that you could take that could create amazing change and build incredible momentum in your life and, and, and start to get really excited about taking the tiny steps um, and also start to look at like what Jim Rohn said, if you want, if, when you get better, life gets better. So what can you do to get better next year? I have actually found myself that when I give myself permission to take the tiny little steps and to, to, to do that, I find that in taking those tiny steps, I start to become a better version of myself just by taking those little tiny steps. So, so for example, I take those tiny little steps, I start to get more clarity. The more clarity I get, the more confidence I start to get. And so it te- generally tends to go hand in hand with like stepping up to take that tiny little step helps me to step up and become a better version of myself. Um, Obviously, we do also run into blocks and things as well. But looking at how can I be better? And I think that's such a powerful question that we can keep asking ourselves. How can I be better? And it's not about putting unrealistic expectations on yourself, but it is about thinking, okay, well, what do I do that I don't like doing? And what do I actually want to do more of? How do I want to be better? Um, so for me, for example, for 2022, I really want to spend more time l- learning about, um, well, how to take better care of myself. I want to learn more about breathing and breath work. Um, and so those are little things that I want to do to try and figure out how I can, how, how can I be better? How can I be the best version of myself in 2022? What are some little things I can do to be that version of myself because I know when I'm working on being the best version of myself or better and better and better version of myself I'm expanding and as I expand my life expands and and everything else feels like it flows with a lot more ease um so so yeah so I focus on on that on like how what does that look like so what does it look like for you what does the best version of you look like um, and just have fun exploring that and playing around with that idea. Um, and also have fun thinking about what the tiny steps are, not what the big, really daunting, terrifying, overwhelming steps are. What are the tiny little steps you can get going with? Um, so just a little something to think about as we get into the new year. Um, it's about the tiny steps, not the big ones. Think the tiny steps create change. Um, really in my experience anyway (laughs) and it can happen so quickly I feel like when we give ourselves permission to take those tiny steps it can just happen it can or everything can start to change so fast um so I really hope you've enjoyed this episode I hope you have the most amazing most magical 2022 and um definitely join me as well I've got in January I've got a fun it's going to be so amazing it's a a free ideas to income challenge where I'm going to really walk through it's actually really going to go deeper into some of the stuff we've talked about today but looking at like how can you actually take your ideas that you've got and turn them into a reality this year like what is it going to take for you to have that breakthrough and to create amazing ideas um so yeah so definitely join me for that go to fea.link forward slash ideas to income fea.link forward slash ideas to income it's gonna be so much fun and there'll be so many women from all over the world joining us for that um well we always have so much fun on the challenges they're always so inspiring so yes i cannot wait that begins on january the 25th um so yeah so join me for that but for now um enjoy your new year and I will see you in the next episode of the She Means Business Show. I hope you've loved this week's episode of the She Means Business Show. If you want more help and support to build a wildly successful business, then join hundreds of thousands of women and become an FEA insider. You'll get access to some of our amazing freebies, to our bonuses, to our giveaways, to so much good stuff. You can join me over at fea.link forward slash insider to get all of the goodness. And I will see you next week for another episode of the She Means Business Show.